In this video, we are going to see a few techniques to create God rays. Now, when we talk about God rays, we talk about rays of light that pass through uh, fog or, you know, some um, smoke. And as you can see from these photos I found on internet, they are more visible when the sunlight is pretty strong and um, or when, you know, there is a visible fog in the scene. And the problem about God rays is that normally people tend to overdo them. They, you know, uh, they are very kind of strong effects and you want to do it in a very subtle way probably because otherwise they can really uh, change the I would say image plan of your artwork and you know I mean you can use God rays to drive the attention to the you know main focus of your image and that's a good thing but they are actually very you know uh, hey catchy and so you know, you need to, you need to, you know, take care of them. And, um, you know, if you decide to uh, add them into your Photoshop file, you need to do it, you know, in a very subtle way. Uh, at least you can try, you can start in a very subtle way. Now, there's different techniques to create these rays. Uh, I will show you a couple of them. Um, I mean, there's one which use some uh, smart filters of you know Photoshop and another one which is probably my favorite uh, it's about uh, creating a custom brush and uh, you know you can use both it depends on the scene now because we are working on a scene which is without fog almost without fog I mean the effect is not going to be that visible so I'm not suggesting you to do such a uh, thing in this Photoshop file, but at least, you know, we can try something. Now, because I'm going to create some God rays close to the camera, we need something, you know, for the light to pass through. So I believe that I can take these three here, make a copy of it and bring it here at the top, on the top right in order to, you know, simulate we have a tree close to the camera on the right. So I'm going down here inside the background folder. And you can see here we have the original uh, tree, which is this one. And so I make a copy of it, Ctrl J, and I'm bringing it in on top in uh, the props folder. OK, and now I can uh, close everything else just to uh, clean up a little bit the file. OK, that's it. Now what to do here? Uh, we can take this uh, photo, right, and keep the horizon where it is uh, right now. You see, these lines help us to understand where the horizon is. If I press Ctrl H, I get the horizon of my render. And I can see this is exactly the this, this situation, you know, this, the, the position I want for this photo. So I will, uh, you know, uh, try to, I will, I will try to keep, you know, the photo uh, in the same place. And um, as you can see, I'm having some issues scaling the, the image. And it's because I'm, you know, have habits in the new Photoshop and I'm using this one, which is the old one, uh, just to, you know, let everybody follow this course. Anyway, I'm keeping the horizon where it is and I'm uh, just scaling up the tree as much as I need. And I can do that because remember, this is a smart object. So the quality of the original photo is not um, is not touched, is not uh, changing, okay, whatsoever. So this is what I want, okay. And uh, of course, I'm going to uh, just take these uh, part of the image and keep this part of the image. So I'm just taking that and masking it. So that's that's what I want. That's what I need. And I am free to push the tree a little bit up there. And uh, now we can, uh, you know, have some God rays coming through the leaves, coming through these holes there. And one way to do that, you know, is to use a filter, which is the blur, radial blur. And uh, how to do that? First of all, we create a new layer here. And we pick a color which should be the color of the light. So uh, it's a pale yellow for now. And I pick a very soft brush, a circular one. 
and I just you know do uh, one uh, single click, 100% opacity, so I get something like this. And I bring this uh, on top of my tree here. And since I want only the areas where I can see through the tree, I need to delete everything else from this layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click on the tree here on the, on the shape of the layer. And as you can see, I have the selection now of the tree, but I, I'm still on the new layer here with the yellow uh, stroke and I press console. And in this way, what I get is, you see, just, um, you know, a yellow color in between each uh, hole of the tree photo. Now, we convert this to a smart object. Um, sometimes it could take uh, more time to create a smart object. It's because Photoshop, you know, is saving your file as a backup, uh, you know, and you don't know it because, you know, it's not telling you. Uh, so if you if you convert a layer into a smart object and it's taking more time than usual, don't worry, you will get a message and uh, you need to wait for the backup copy of your document to save before you can create a smart object. Anyway, now that we have a smart object, we can go here to filters, blur, radial blur, and the radial blur is basically used to uh, work with, uh, a, I mean, a pivot, and you can change the pivot here in this small uh, square. I mean, not really cool, not really, uh, you know, friendly, I would say. I cannot see a preview, a decent preview of what is going to happen, but, you know, this is it. And uh, I don't want this, okay, uh, which is cool to add, you know, like um, a speed movement on some tires, if you have a car. Uh, I'm going to use the zoom mode and the zoom mode, you know, it basically like um, is, is, is shifting the borders of the image and in, in order to give us a um, feeling of speed or hyperspeed. But you can move the power of this effect on the top right. And so you see you get this kind of lines. And if you uh, pick a quality, you can go draft good or best. I mean, if the image is really high resolution, I suggest you to go for draft, press OK, and take a look how it looks like. And then if you look at the result, you go back to this smart filter and you put best and you press OK again, because now it will take uh, a few seconds. Anyway, you get like something like this and then you get this effect. Now, the problem of these is that as you can see, even if I use 100% in the strength of the uh, filter here, uh, the you know the um, length of these rays is not that long, and there's not really a way to fix this if you you know keep the image there. I will show you what to do in a minute. Anyway, got the rays uh, and any glow effect should go in uh, screen mode, okay? So in the previous lesson, we have seen that if you want to paint light on objects, okay? Or if you want to paint the source of the lights, like, I don't know, a light bulb, you need to paint a uh, um, pale yellow color, for example, in a black layer in color dodge mode, okay? But this thing is different. We are not painting light on an object, we are painting light which is scattered in the light in, in, in the air because of dust, because of particle, okay? That effect should be in screen mode, okay? Now, if I move this, you see uh, there's, there's like some rays of light and it could be something. Normally what I do is, you know, I uh, tend to duplicate this layer many times. So I press Ctrl J Ctrl J, and each time you press Ctrl J, you see the effect gets stronger. Uh, this is not something I would keep for this image. It's terrible. It's too much. I'm just showing you, um, you know, the idea. And then what do you normally do here is uh, you select all the layers together and you convert them together into another smart object. And the reason is we need another smart object because we need to 
uh, try to delete a little bit of this kind of very sharp lines, uh, which is never the case. I mean, you never get this kind of uh, result. Uh, and uh, now, for example, I'm getting a message on the other screen saying completing pending document saving operations, which means exactly what I told you two minutes ago. I need to wait for the document to save in order to go further. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is to uh, add another smart filters on this new smart object. And you can choose between uh, Gaussian or you can even go back with the uh, radial blur. But this time you can choose the spiral option and uh, it's going to, um, you know, basically uh, blur these areas and keep this untouched, which is exactly what we want because we can keep this very sharp effect close to the tree, but you know, as long as the rays are going far away from it, you need something more kind of blurred, okay? So, I mean, it's taking ages. I need to wait for the saving process to go and then we start again. Okay, here we go. We have the smart object ready and we can go back on filters, blur, radial blur. Uh, this time, instead of going with the zoom method, we spin uh, the result and we pick this uh, pivot and we bring it up there basically. And you don't need that much of an amount, okay? Just probably, I don't know, two, it's enough, two or three, it's enough. We can try. If we like the result, we keep it or, you know, then, uh, you see, this is like three, this is too much. So I'm going back on the radial blur and I'm going for, I don't know, two. See, we want to see some of that uh, effects. Let's try, I don't know, one. Okay, that's cool. And uh, you can, is, you know, again, do another smart object, you do another radial blur, and then mask the result with this. Or we can even do this now. We can, I don't know, have tree here as, as a blur, and then we can just, you know, mask these effects from uh, the tree itself. So I'm going for a radial uh, gradient, black color, and I'm, I'm doing it like this. So you see now we have a uh, sharp uh, ray of light close to the tree and, and then when it goes far away, it becomes uh, blurred. Now, again, this is not an effect I would recommend to do uh, for many reasons in this scene. One reason is we are not looking at the sun directly, which is, you know, um, a good idea you see, to create uh, some uh, God rays, because when you look at the sun directly, you know, in front of you, you get a very overexposed area, and and that makes sense, okay. But other otherwise, you know, it, it's kind it's kind of you know weird and wrong to have some uh, God rays. Uh, you can, you know, you can get something like a, a part of it. Let's say that we have this image and we crop it here. We can anyway have some God rays, but it sounds weird. And as you can see in this image, there's a lot of fog. And in our image, so the second reason is I would not do this in here because we don't have enough fog. We, not, we don't have enough dust in the air to you know simulate uh, something like that but anyway this is uh, one way it works really well it works really well when you have the sun visible in the scene and so you get basically uh you can just you know put the pivot exactly the first pivot the the one with the zoom effect exactly where the sun is and it works amazingly okay Another way to create God rays could be to create a custom brush like we did in the previous video when we had to paint light on the walls. But, you know, um, there is another uh, way uh, to accomplish God rays and this is it. Now, what we need to do is to, first of all, create a new layer behind the tree and fill it with a little bit of 
uh, here color of the light you see is basically is, is, is my way to say okay there's sun uh, below there I mean uh, you know below this layer and um, behind the tree I would say okay so I take a very smooth brush and I start painting you know this area a little bit brighter <clears throat> now what can you do uh, then you can uh, you know make a copy of this layer Control J and we want to keep only these areas inside uh, the tree holes so we control click on the tree layer and with the selection on this uh, layer we click on cancel okay we delete everything but those areas and if you move this layer it will you will understand okay and now what to do now we can take this layer bring it there because you know we suppose that let's suppose that the rays of light you know coming from the tree they will basically touch the ground there okay and we press ctrl t to get the anchors and we squeeze down this uh image this uh, shapes in order to put you know in perspective okay let's simplify this uh i mean it's it's not going to work that well in this image again because the sun is not that high and you know there's no fog uh, anyway i will show you what to do now what to do uh, from here i'm going to erase uh areas i don't care about like this one for example i don't care about this i don't care about this and i need to work only on uh, these area here okay so now what to do i take the finger you know the uh smudge tool which is the one with the icon of a finger and I increase the strength to something very close to 100, okay? Something like 98, 95 would be okay. And you don't have to get finger painting on um, to, for, for, this, for this example. Now, I take a um, shape like this, okay? It could be, uh, you know, with hardness to zero, as I can show you here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is this i'm going i'm starting from the uh, further you know uh area for the further zone like this one so note from this one from this one and i'm uh, starting with the small brush and basically what you need to do is this you don't have to paint manually you have to click once in this area and then press or you you, you can just press shift click in this area sorry sorry press click in this area press shift and then press uh, another one uh, another time with the mouse button up there okay so you will see that you see the basically uh, Photoshop will smudge this area to the top and we are doing this and not the other way around because um, at the end the line will be very thin so it doesn't work if you do it uh you know uh, all the, the other way around now the problem is uh, this area um should be cut it out should be cut and pasted into a new layer because if you keep doing it and i don't know you pick this area you will basically delete the first result and you don't want that okay so uh, be careful because when you when you start doing this it's almost impossible to stop the software because it's very you know expensive as an operation so it could crash okay anyway what to do you select with the lasso all the area okay you don't you're basically not using like this and you press ctrl x to cut it ctrl v to paint it and and then you after you paste it you put it there in position i don't care if it's not perfect and you keep doing it as many times as you want and because you know these rays should open a little bit you know you need to uh basically you know start from uh, this position press shift and then click on you know somewhere which is close to this point because you know they should Po every, every line here should point to the same area anyway and this is another one and then I again take this area here see 
I should start from this small here. But it doesn't matter, we are going to delete this last part of the race. So Control X again, Control V to paste, and then position it again there. And then I can smudge this out. And you continue to do this till you complete the entire area. Control X, Control V, put it there. And I will speed up a little bit the process. If you want to speed up the process, of course, you need a bigger, uh, you know, a bigger brush. But at the same time, as you can see, uh, Photoshop gets lower because there's many uh, more more things to handle and so it gets lower. So my advice is to do this a little by little, piece by piece. And maybe at the end, before we, you know, collapse everything together, before we merge all this layer together, we can even move them a little bit and position, positioning them in the right place because maybe we want to, you know, uh, fix the um, ending point or the starting point. So it would be a good idea. So Control X again, Control V. Um, this will be probably the last one. And the uh, smudge tool and do this. So working on different layers will give us the ability to um, I would say positioning them properly before we merge them with before we go on with the next uh, step. So now we end up with these layers. In each layer, there is a god ray, and we can see if we move them. And so what I'm trying to do now is to you know probably rotate them a little bit in order to position them as I want. I would say that they should start mainly from the same point here and then they should open up uh, on the ground. If you want, you can even take one of these shapes and turn into a brush, which makes, which makes sense. You can even distort, you know, something to make a thinner line at the top. And then what I try to do is to uh, move them in order to uh, have something that start exactly in a hole there. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes it's a little bit harder, but you know, at least we could try. Now, again, in this image doesn't make any sense because, you know, we don't have the sun up there, but it's just a way to show you how to handle with these kind of things. Okay, when you have something that you may like, now then you need to select all the layers uh, with the shift. I mean, uh, right now you can make a, you know a backup copy, so you can just press Control J, and so you have a new another five layers, and then you merge them together with Control E, and then you hide the old ones. Okay, so now this layer is just a single layer. And we can convert this to a smart object. Once it's a smart object, we can then uh, <clears throat> put a mask and hide these part of the, you know, rays. And then filter, blur, 
Raja Blur, and we just pin them a little bit in order to break a little bit this sharpness we have here. And if you don't like the result, you can go back on this filter uh, and, you know, get something a little bit less strong. Back and forth, as always. Okay, now let's say that I like something in the middle here. I don't know, something like six. Let's try. Okay, cool. And then what you need here is a black layer in color dodge. Because you should have some light on top of the uh, leaves. So we bring this black layer in color dodge on top of the tree. We attach it to the tree and with a very, very low opacity, we start painting a little bit of light there. You know where the light is passing through. Okay. You don't want to exaggerate. Okay. You can you can exaggerate if you want, but at least you can go down with the you know with the with the transparency with the opacity of this layer, and then on top of this a little bit of glow. Okay, and glow is transparent layer in screen mode like the God Rays, uh, and so you know a small you know low opacity, and you start you know little by little adding a little bit of glow exactly where you know the area is overexposed because there is a lot of light. And as you can see, you know, uh, God Rays plus uh, the Color Dodge, Black Layer in Color Dodge layer, you know, plus this um, screen layer for the glow, you know, little by little, one by one, we get to a nice result here. Now, it doesn't make sense again. I want to underline this, you know, for this uh, scene, doesn't make any sense but you see is a kind of realistic result. And, um, you know, you can do this if you need. Uh, I'm going to hide this whole group because I'm not going to keep it, you know, doesn't make sense for this image. So I'm, uh, you know, grouping this tree plus dot rays and I keep it off. You will find it in the uh, final zip file uh, you can download.